Hey everyone, this is Pasha. In this video, I am going to teach you a step by step how to create your first search campaign on Google Ads. The first step to run campaigns on Google is to create a Google Ads account. In order to create your Google Ads account, go to Google and search for Google Ads. The first link, ads.google.com, takes you to Google Ads account platform where you could uh, create your account by clicking on the start now or signing in your existing account. Remember, Google Ads account is totally free. All you need to have is a Gmail address a credit card and a website. After you create your Google Ads account, this is how your Google Ads homepage looks like. On the left side, you have your menu where you could navigate between campaigns, ad groups, ads, keywords, and etc. Also on top of the page, you have tools and settings where you could access uh, other settings of your account and campaigns. Now we are going to create our first search campaign on Google Ads. Click on the plus button here and press new campaign. In the first step, Google asks you what goal you want to choose for your campaign. Whether you are looking to drive more sales, you get more leads, increase your website traffic, or other options that you see here. The last option is create a campaign without the goals guidance. My recommendation is to choose this option and start creating your campaign without a goal. After that, Google asks you to select a campaign type. There are many different campaign types on Google Ads that you can choose from. Search campaigns. Search campaigns are text ads on search results that let you reach people while they are searching on Google for the products and services you offer. Display ads. Display campaigns let you reach a relevant audience with visually engaging ads as they browse millions of websites apps and Google own properties to achieve your marketing objectives. Shopping ads. Shopping campaigns are useful for e-commerce and retailers where you could sell your product inventory. Video ads. Video campaigns let you show video ads on YouTube and other websites. App campaigns. App campaigns let help you find new app users and increase sales within your app. For our purpose, we are going to select search as we want to create a search campaign on Google Ads. On the next step, you can select the results that you want to get from your campaign. Whether you want to increase your website visits, whether you want to receive more phone calls or if you have an application and you want to increase the number of downloads of your application. This is not a mandatory step. So for now, we don't select any of them. Now we have to give a name to our campaign. I would recommend to have a structure for your naming convention so that in future when your number of campaigns increases, you could easily navigate among your campaigns and could find the campaign that you are looking for. What I'm going to name it is first search campaign. After you press continue, you must select your budget and bidding strategy. Budget is the average daily budget that you want to spend for your campaign. Your average daily budget is the average amount that you set for your ad campaign on a per day basis. It specifies how much you are roughly comfortable spending each day over the course of the month. 
Google will optimize your campaign spend for days of the month when you are more likely to get clicks and conversion like when search traffic is higher or when it predicts higher ROI for your ads. This means that on some days you might not reach your average daily budget while on some other days you might exceed it. We are going to give $15 as our daily budget. Remember, this $15 doesn't mean that Google is going to spend $15 for your campaigns on a daily basis. On some days, Google algorithms may decide to spend less because you have less chance of getting your results. And on some other days, Google might spend more than $15, for example, $20 or $25 because there are more chances of getting the results that you are looking for. Now we are going to choose our bidding strategy. A bid strategy determines how you want to bid on your keywords and how much you are willing to pay for each click. There are many options to choose your bid strategy, both automated and manual. Some options include maximize clicks, maximize conversions, manual ROAS, target CPA, target ROAS, maximize conversion value, and there are other options too that you could choose depending on your goal, your strategy, and your campaign type. Here, there is a small text which says select a bid strategy directly, not recommended. Even though Google says it is not recommended, actually this is the most recommended approach when selecting the bid strategy for your campaign. So we click on that. There are a number of options that Google gives us, automated and manual, which one of them should be selected as our bid strategy. In this course, I'm not going to go through all of them and the difference between different bid strategies Usually maximize conversion could be a good option for your first campaign if you are looking to get conversion. But what does conversion mean? Let's say you, ha you have a website and you have a form on your website. You are running campaign on Google so that users click on your website and click on your ad, come to this page and fill this form and press submit. So each time that, that a user submits this button, it means that they, you got a conversion and, click, and Google records a conversion for you. This is especially useful when you have items to sell on your website or you are looking to get leads. In order to define conversion for Google, you need to go to tools and settings and go to conversion and create a conversion action for your campaign so that Google can understand what kind of conversion you are looking for. In this course, we are not going through this. So let's say we are looking to increase the website traffic. So we go with maximize clicks. Another good thing that uh, you see here, another good option is manual CPC. CPC stands for cost per click, means how much your clicks cost and how much you, you are willing to pay for your each click on your ads. Let's say a keyword that you have selected for your campaign that you are targeting, it costs $10, but it's for, too expensive for you. You are not willing to spend $10 maximum. You are willing to spend $4 for your keyword. So by selecting manual CPC, you could give a maximum, maximize maximum uh, amount to the CPC of your keywords. You could say, for example, I'm not willing to spend more than $4 for 
each ad. So if a keyword is $10, you will probably, your ad will probably not show to users because your maximize, your maximum CPC is too low. But that's fine because that keyword is not profitable for you. You are focusing your budget on keywords that have a profitable cost per clicks for you. As I said, we are going to increase the number of visits to our website. So we click on maximize click. For more settings, you have two options. Add rotation. Optimize prefer best for performing ads or do not optimize rotary ads indefinitely. What it means that if you press uh, select the first one, which is the default option, Google will uh, optimize your ads and will show the best performing ads that you have created. But if you select the second option, Google will show your ads in a rotating way indefinitely. Uh, it, does, it doesn't matter which one is performing better. Which one you want to choose? Usually when you create a new campaign and you don't have previous data, it's a good option to go for do not optimize, rotate ads indefinitely. In that way, your ads and your headlines will get enough data so that Google can understand which one is performing better. After you have enough data in your ads, you could change your settings to optimize prefer best performing ads so that Google only shows the best performing combination of your ads. Now there are other settings that we must choose to build our campaign. Networks. There are some websites that are related to Google and you could choose to show your ads on those websites too, not only on Google search results. By default, these options are selected, but generally as a best practice, it's always good to deselect both of these options because usually uh, these websites do not have good results and running and selecting them just causes your budget spends faster and with less results. So remember, always deselect these two options unless you have a good reason to want to run your, camp run your ads on search network and display networks. Locations. Here you choose what locations you want to show your ads in and what you, locations you want you don't want to show your ads let's say we have a business in canada and we want to show our ads only in canada not international but there is a province in canada quebec which is a french language province and we don't provide service in that location in that province so what here we can do is enter another location we select canada as our target country as our target location and then we could exclude quebec from our locations here instead of target press on exclude what it means is, is that our campaign, our ads will show on all over Canada except Quebec province. The next section is language. You could select what language the users that you want to see your ads should speak. Previously, the language that Google was recognizing for users was based on their browser language. For example, if you had set the language of your browser to French, Google would recognize to you as a French speaking user. But now these settings has changed and Google 
considers other factors in what language your users are. You could select English or no other or other languages and depending on your campaign and your services. By default for us it is English so we let it be. The next section is audience segment. Audience segment could be very useful tools for you to optimize your campaign. Let's say you are selling athletic shoes, you are selling sneakers. You could select for search for a sneaker here and let's say we could select athletic shoes and running apparel in our audience segment. What it means is that by selecting this audience, you could increase your bid strategy, your bid amount to the people who are in this audience segments. For example, if you are willing to spend $4 for each keyword or each click, you could increase that uh, $4 for 20% for people who are in these segments, athletic shoes and running apparel. And the reason is that there are more chances of getting conversions from people who are interested in athletic shoes. Dynamic search ad setting. Dynamic search ads or DSA is a useful option usually for e-commerce websites and websites with a lot of content. If you have many products on your website, you don't want to create an ad for each product because you don't have time. By selecting dynamic search ads, you will let Google to create ads uh, on behalf of you based on the content and products on your website. Google will create headlines and descriptions for you. By clicking on more settings, you could uh, define a start and end date. For a start date, let's say we are going for tomorrow. For end date, we could either select an end date for our campaign or let it run indefinitely and decide to pause it later when we want to. Add a schedule. After you run your campaign for some time, you decide that uh, you, the data shows you that you get less conversions, for example, from 9 to 11 in the morning. So you could stop, you could pause your ads to run on that time of the day and just select some hours and some times of the day that you are more likely to get more conversions. Campaign structure on Google Ads has four layers. The top layer is your Google Ads account. In your account, you can create as many campaigns as you wish with different goals and different types. Each campaign can have many ad groups. Ad groups are where you include your keywords. For your campaign, you want to include tightly related keywords in separate ad groups. In the final layer, you will create an ad for your ad group. Your ad must have headline and description. You should try to include your keywords in your headline and description for your ad. That way, you will have higher quality score and there are more chance of users clicking on your ad. Now we want to create the ad groups and keywords for our campaign. Let's say our business is a digital marketing agency. We are offering different services in our company. We are offering SEO, search engine optimization. We are offering online advertisement. We are offering social media management or web development and other services. For each of these services, 
we want to have different keywords in a different section. We don't want to put all our, our keywords related to SEO, Google ads, Facebook ads, social media in one ad group because the theme of those keywords are totally different. And we cannot write a good ad that contains all those keywords. For a digital marketing agency, this is an example of how the ad group structure will look like. The first column includes our ad groups, which are based on the services that the company offers. The company offers SEO, Google Ads, web development, social media management, and probably other services. Also, we have an ad group for digital marketing in general, where users search for related keywords. As you could see, we have included keywords related to SEO only in SEO ad group, SEO services, SEO specialist, SEO consultant, SEO expert, and SEO agency. That way, we could write an ad which includes the keywords related to SEO that we are using. Or for example, for web development, we have only included the keywords related to web design, website development, web design company, and so on. This is how you should structure your ad groups for your company and your website based on the services that you offer, based on your categories, based on your products, and so on. The first ad group that we want to create for our campaign, let's say digital marketing ad group. In this ad group, we want to put all the keywords related to digital marketing. But how should we decide on what keywords we should target? There are many tools to do your keyword research, which is one of the first steps when running a campaign, a search campaign. By doing your keyword research, you could decide on the structure of your keywords and ad groups. One useful tool in Google Ads is Keyword Planner. Here, Google gives you very useful recommendations and suggestions on what keywords you could uh, target for your campaign. By clicking on Discover New Keywords, uh, we type one keyword that comes into our mind. Let's say digital marketing agency. By pressing get results, Google offers you other keywords and their monthly searches and their average cost per click, minimum and maximum. You probably don't want to look at this column average month monthly searches because that might not be very useful. But here in list of keywords, you could find a lot of really good keywords that you could use in your campaign. For example, a digital marketing agency was our keyword that we typed. We have digital marketing company, digital marketing services, digital agency. We have other keywords here, social media marketing agency, social media agency, but probably we want to use these social media related keywords in another ad group related to social media, internet marketing company, online marketing company. So for our digital marketing, let's say uh, we want to go with some keywords like this.
There is a concept in keyword planning in Google Ads called match types. You have three options, broad match, phrase match, and exact match. In this course, I'm not going to, uh, to do uh, my keyword match types in Google Ads because that's entirely another discussion, but it's good to know what's exact match, what's phrase match, and what's broad match. When you put double square as a syntax for your keywords, it will be considered as exact match. If you put quotes, it will be considered by Google as phrase match. And if you don't put anything, uh, it will be considered as broad match. Here we go with broad match because we are running a website clicks, website increase website visitors campaign. So here's our first ad group, digital marketing. Here are our keywords that we used for digital marketing ad group. And now is the time to create our first ad in our campaign. There are two types of ads that we could create. One is expanded text ads uh, or ETA, and one is a responsive search as ads or RSA. Google has recently announced that they will stop supporting e expanded text ads or ETAs. So there is no use to go through that. And from now on, we will probably need to create our all our ads as responsive search ads. In ads section, the first column, is, the first field is your final URL. This is where users will go after they click on your website. Here is our first uh, our final URL. Display pass. You could add some characters, some some text to your final URL, which it could be related to your ad group and keywords. Uh, for example, now that we are uh, running an ad for digital marketing keywords and ad group. Uh, we could uh, type marketing and add it at the end of our final pass. This is how it will be shown. Our final URL slash our display pass. This display pass will not change the, your final URL. Your final URL that users will go to will be this field. Headlines. Here you should write some headlines. You could write many headlines, more than 10 headlines for your ad. Generally, Google Ads will show either two headlines or three headlines when your ads are shown to uh, users when they search your keyword. Some headlines, in writing headlines, you should pay attention that you, you want to write headlines that include your keywords. You have many options in writing headlines. So you want to write headlines and use, include these keywords in your headlines because that will improve your quality score and that will increase the chance of your ads being shown and it will increase your click through rate or CTR. For example, for, fun of, for one of the headlines, you could write the name of your company. Uh, other headlines could be digital marketing agency. Digital marketing services or digital marketing company. Let's say you want to show your the name of your company or one of these headlines as always the headline one and I, 
you want always to show that headline when your ads are shown. Currently, Google Ads will decide which ad and uh, which headlines should be shown and in which order. But there is this small button as pin. You could pin your headline as either position one, position two, or position three. So now uh, when we select our headline, our, our pin our headline one as H1, it will always be shown here as headline one. Google will rotate headline two and headline three, but not headline one anymore. Now you have the option to write four descriptions. Google will show either one or two descriptions based on the performance and whether you pinned it or not. Here, similar to headlines, you want to increase your keywords in your description too. For example, increase your online presence using our full service marketing. For description two, we could write your number one trusted partner in digital marketing strategies. You have the option to write up to four descriptions and again you could uh, pin one of one of the descriptions to be shown add url options those are the options uh, to uh, for tracking your uh, ads tracking your visitors through google analytics or other analytics tools that you use now we're almost done we created our ad group we named it digital marketing we put five related tightly related keywords in that ad group and we created one responsive search ad for our keywords Here you could create another ad group or you could go to next. Now we get to site links. Site links are optional options that you could add to your ads to increase your CTR and quality score. For example, let's say we are a commercial real estate software. As you see, I typed uh, commercial real estate software. I searched for this search term. There are many ads shown here. Uh, as you see, there are four ads here. that are highlighted at ads. The first one, here are headlines, the headlines that the, that company has written. Here are the descriptions and the descriptions, two descriptions that that company has written for their ads, like uh, what we did. And the links that you see here, they are called site link. They make more your ad more appealing uh, there is a headline a short text and they are probably different from the final url for their ad they uh, link to other uh, related pages of the website there are many kind of extensions that we could use site link call out extensions and other things call extensions image extensions app extensions promotion extensions. In this um, course, I'm not going to, to go through site links but and other extensions, but keep in mind that uh, writing site links uh, could always be 
useful. You have to, the option to write four site links and it could make your ad more appealing. Now we are almost done. In the next step, we just need to review our campaign. Campaign name, campaign type, budget, bidding, networks, our locations and other stuff. And now by clicking publish, our ads campaign will go live. Here's our campaign. We schedule it uh, for a day in future, so it's not live right now. The status says pending because our ads are in review. Uh, first, Google team must review all ads and after they're done reviewing in maximum 24 hours, your camp, if there, there is no issue in your ads, your campaign will be eligible to run. All right, in this video, we learned how to create a simple search campaign on Google Ads. When building your campaigns, there are many, many, many more details that you should keep in mind. What kind of bid strategy you want to use, what match typing you want to use for your keywords, how to create conversion actions, or how to negate unrelated search terms, or many other details. But it's always nice to start from somewhere. If you have any question regarding your campaign, your search campaign, or other types of campaign on Google Ads, leave it in comments.